Hey everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and we've got some Miko art in front of us, which means it must be time to visit the West Kingdoms again. Today we're looking at the first game in the West Kingdoms trilogy, but the last game I'm covering out of them, and that is Architects of the West Kingdom. And a quick thank you to Renegade Game for sending me a review copy of this one. I've had kind of a mixed experience with this trilogy. Paladins, I didn't enjoy that much, but Viscounts, I was very pleasantly surprised with. So I'm going to show you how Solo works in Architects and see if it exceeds or doesn't live up to the other titles. And if you want to hear my thoughts on the game Solo Play in general, check out my separate review video. And if you like the content you see here on the One Stop Co-op Shop, please consider supporting us on Patreon for early access to our videos, voting on which games we cover, listen to our weekly podcast, or check out our separate streaming channel for even more videos. And hey, drop on by our Discord. We have great conversations there every day. Come join in. So to go through the basics of Architects, this is a worker placement game, and each player has a pool of 20 workers. I'm playing solo, so there's me and the AI. Here she is, Helena, or Helena. This is the tougher AI in the base game, to give me more of a challenge. And the gameplay couldn't be simpler. You take turns placing a single worker on one of the action spaces on the board. Yes, this is worker placement. And the general rule of the game is the more workers you have on a space after you place a worker there, the greater the effect. Like if I go to this forest to get some wood, the first worker there will only get me one, the second worker there will get me two, and so on. But the more workers you have in a single place to reap those benefits, the higher chance that another player is going to come in and grab them and eventually throw them in prison, gaining a monetary reward for doing so, and then you'll have to get them back out to kind of refresh your worker pool. And the game progresses until every spot for your given player count is filled in the guild hall. This is where you go to build building cards, uh, one of the main sources of victory points, as well as helping to construct the cathedral, another major source of victory points. And once they've all been filled out, each player gets one more turn, and then, like most heroes, you see who got the most points in the end. And besides building in cathedrals, you can get points or lose them based on where you are on this virtue track, which you're going to move up and down based on how nice you are and the actions you take. Some effects will also give you debt cards that are worth negative two victory points. If you have gold or marble resources, they're each worth one victory point. A bunch of extra money is worth victory points, and if you have too many workers in jail, it is a negative point for you. And the AI is pretty much the same. The only major difference is every time they go to the guild hall to help build the cathedral, they get three victory points or only one if you're playing on the easier Constantine side. So they tend to naturally benefit from you letting the game get drawn out. And the AI turn is incredibly simple. You just flip a card. It tells you in which action space to put their worker down and it tells you what effect happens. Generally, it's uh, pretty straightforward. And that's mostly enough to get going on, so you can skip straight to the playthrough using the timestamps. But if you want to hear a more detailed breakdown of each action space, hang on. So first in the center here, you have the basic kind of resource collection spaces. The silversmith is going to get you silver coins, one plus one per worker there. So the first worker there will get you two, second will get you three. Forest and quarry give you wood or stone respectively per worker there. And the mines can get you both clay bricks or gold. Now gold is a two for one, so until you have at least two workers there, you can't even get it. Whereas a clay comes with a bonus one, kind of like the silver. You've also got this offer of eight apprentices over here. Most will give you a little skill icon in the upper left, which is needed to build some buildings. They'll have some kind of ongoing power or bonus. They might make you gain or lose virtue. And these are silver coins, indicating you have to pay to take this action. You gotta spend four coins. Two of them are kind of a lighter bronze because it goes to the tax stand whereas the other two just go back to the coin supply. Alternatively, if you go to the workshop, you can gain one new building card, plus one per pair of workers here. And I mentioned buildings already, but here's the victory points they're worth, the apprentice skills you need to gain them, in this case, one of each, the resources to build it, and they'll either have a lightning bolt for an immediate effect or a flag for endgame scoring. In this case, you're going to get some free virtue moves per pair of gold at the end of the game. So again, Workshop will let you hire apprentices or get more buildings. You're going to start with three in your hand, generally. The King's Storehouse lets you change up some resources. You can spend three of wood and or stone to get marble, which is worth one victory point. Both gold and marble, kind of the hard-to-come-by resources, are worth one victory point each. Or you can discard some basic resources to gain some virtue. The tax stand is going to lose you two virtue, but coins will build up here from any actions that have those lighter coin tax icons. So it's a great way to get a ton of silver if you don't mind uh, routing the taxes and losing some uh, faith. The black market is also going to lose you virtue. And note that these are little action circles. These are the only actions in the game that only one person can go to at a time. You have to also spend some coins and you're going to gain either a bunch of resources or here you can get any apprentice for free or you can draw five building cards and pick one, 
when all three of these spaces are filled or twice during the game when a certain number of buildings have been built, you're going to have this little like reset of the black market and stuff. We'll get to that later. I already mentioned the guild hall. That's where you go to build buildings or to help with the cathedral. You have to pay the top cost. So like here, I have to pay one gold. Then I go up here. Now I can pay some wood and stone. Then I can pay some marble. It's going to be worth victory points at the end of the game. But you have to discard a building card to do it. And if you do it early in the game, you'll get a little reward card that gives you some bonuses. Uh, later on, you just get some virtue for doing so. But finally, we get to the two most important locations in the game. The town center is how you and the AI will grab other workers. You can grab everybody of a single color from one location with one worker here. So I could like arrest both the people in the forest here. And then the guardhouse is going to let you throw them into jail. You'll get some silver for doing so. There's some other actions you can do there, like letting your people out to get your workers back. You'll see those as we play. And just a final note, there are five different player boards in the game. Each one has a generic side that doesn't have any special abilities, or a unique side with a special ability and a unique setup. So for Ada here, I'm starting with a single gold. I'm going to gain an extra building to start, so I'll have four cards instead of three. But I have no silver to start, but I do have 11 virtues, so she's quite virtuous. And her bonus ability is that she pays one less tax for any cost. So for a non-tax silver, one of the darker coins, it's not going to help at all. But like if she goes to the workshop, it would cost her three coins, uh, one tax and two regular instead of four. Okay, before we get her extra building card, we draw five and pick three. And I'm thinking I might go for a kind of high virtue strategy this game. So let's see, church, this would let me get rid of a debt. I'm not sure I'll be getting debt. It does increase my virtue. Three brick and three stone is super cheap to get though. So it is kind of nice for five victory points. Hideout would lose me a bunch of virtue, but would get my people out of prison. Uh, pretty good victory points, but I need two different icons to get it, so that's a maybe. The keep is endgame scoring. I, again, lose virtue to build it, but it looks like I get a victory point for every group of three or more workers I've got captured. But two gold, so it's really kind of like ten victory points a man. I need every single type of worker to get it. Ooh, Lumber Camp just straight up gives me four wood. That would combo well with some of the other things I might build. And just needs some clay and stone. Again, not too bad. and No requirements to build it. And then uh, the castle we saw earlier gives you victory points for pairs of gold. That seems tough to pull off. Well, for now, I'm leaning toward the easier to build church and Lumber Camp. And then I don't really care which of these I take because I'm probably going to discard them to build the cathedral anyway. And here's Ada's bonus card. Oh, very interesting. This is a lot like the lumber camp. In fact, it would straight up let me build the lumber camp, which would then get me the wood to build maybe something else. Although actually, I don't really need much wood, do I? Except for at the keep. But yeah, it seems like building all three of these is likely going to happen. All right, with that, I'm ready to take my first action. I have no silver, so unless I go rob the tax stand, I can't do much. And you do have some limitations based on your virtue. If you're at 10 or higher like I am, you can't go to the black market. And if you're at four or lower, you can't help to build the cathedral. So uh, I guess I'm not black marketing it yet. And the tax stand doesn't have enough money to tempt me just now. So what the hey, let's start getting some wood and stone for our well. So we'll go to the quarry first, get one stone. And our friend Helena... Let's go into the workshop. So let's uh, walk through how these cards kind of work. It says, follow these steps. So we're going to put two tax into the tax stand. Note that the AI has no silver, so this is not actually like coming from their supply or anything. It's going to get rid of the indicated worker. And then additionally, they're going to add one future scheme card. These are kind of like upgrade cards they can get per worker to their discard pile. So they pop on the workshop. This stone cutter is gone. Whenever an apprentice leaves the row, you slide them down and add them on here. We got a merchant. And then remember it said two taxes. We're going to the tax stand. It's looking a little more tempting to me. And it mentioned future schemes. These are kind of like more powerful actions. We're going to take one at random, add it to the discard pile. And we can see what it is. It's just another guardhouse action. This is identical to ones they already have. But it means they're more likely to throw my guys in jail or to get out their own guys. All right, but that didn't have any effect on me really yet. So let's grab a wood. I could have put my second worker on the quarry to get two stone instead of one, but that would also mean that if they arrested me, they would uh, get more from me. So let's avoid that for now. Oh, is indeed arresting me. She's going to put a worker in the town center, one silver going to the tax stand, and she'll grab my workers from the place with the most. Although if it's a tie like it is right now, it's going to go down here. So let's see. In this case, I have one worker on the forest, one worker on the quarry. So it's tied. So she's going to go for my worker on the quarry. I'm sorry. I think I just said quarry, but I meant forest. That was higher up. One more silver at the tax stand. We have seven. And she puts my guy here on her little captured spot. Eventually she might drop him off at the guardhouse in prison. Then I can get him back more easily. Well, no worries. I still need wood. So let's send another guy there. And she's going to the workshop again. Getting rid of this squire. 
He might have actually been an interesting one for me to get. He would have given up virtue immediately. Every time you have a black market reset, you'll see that in a second. If you had zero people in the prison, it would have given you a free marble. Although avoiding prison is usually a bit tough, so that might have been a hard one to get anyway. We have a pickpocket now. He'll lower your virtue, but he gives you a goal whenever you rob the tax stand. And let's not forget they have two workers here, so two future schemes. It's a town center, but ooh, doing double duty. Grabs my people from the two highest places. And this is an interesting one. It places a worker on the guild hall just to accelerate the game. And remember, the AI gets three to three points from each person on there. So, uh, yeah, that's not a great card for me. Now, I generally never like to let the AI keep two or more workers on the same spot because they tend to benefit, like the workshop giving them more and more new actions. So I'm going to the town center. Remember, Ada's special ability is not to pay one tax per cost. And normally the first person you put here to grab some workers from one location would cost one tax, but here it's free for her. So I'm going to arrest both of the AI's workers on the workshop. So they go to my captured area, and if I go to the guardhouse later, I can turn them in for some silver. And the AI is going to arrest me right back. And this time, actually, the guy that's put in the town center wins the cut. It's one more tax. We're looking pretty good there. And one more of my workers hanging out here. And you know what? Why not? Because I want to build up for some more silver. Let's go to the town center and grab both of these guys. And when the AI knows I was eyeing all that money in the tax stand, they're going to remove all of it. Again, they don't get silver themselves, but they're going to lose two virtue as though they had robbed the tax stand. And they get one marble, which, again, is just worth one victory point for them. But they're dropping very low on the virtue track, down to five and a negative one. All right, as for me, if I want to build that well, I still need more stones. He's going to get me two. And jeez, they're going to arrest me again, going right to my two guys at the quarry. Well, I'm still going to go there one more time because I think that'll give me enough stone for my first several buildings. Oh, and the AI is going to go to the black market. They'll take the rightmost space available, which since I haven't gone, I can't even go with my virtue, uh, will be the rightmost. And they'll get two marble for that and lose another virtue. They are very not virtuous this game. So down they go. Two marble, two victory points. And for a player, I would not be able to build at the cathedral with this much virtue, but the AI ignores all of that. And don't forget, if two more black market spaces get filled, we're going to have a black market reset, which will send all the people in the black market to prison, and also punish players for having too many people in prison, so I like that they're going there, I guess. But while they express questionable morals, I'm going to go ahead and go to the guild hall. And I do have what I need to build this well. But you know, nicely enough, Ada started with a gold. It's like she was meant to build this first cathedral thing. Now, I do need to discard a building card. Let's get rid of this silly little keep. And she'll spend the gold, but it takes her up to the two victory point spot, and she gets the top reward card as long as reward cards remain. Oh, nice. I get one virtue. That's always going to happen. And I get a building card back, so it's like I didn't even lose it. So I am super virtuous. My new building, five victory points, just stone and wood. Again, nice and easy to build. And I get one victory point at the end of the game for each hammer icon on apprentices I have. Nice little uh, option there. All right, I'm first on the board. What are you going to do? I'm going to go to the tax stand again. There's only one tax there, but I guess they just really want to rob it. So man, they are down to negative seven victory points? Now this would mean that they would pay fewer taxes, kind of like my special power, uh, if the AI cared about such things. But they also just got a fourth marble, so I think they're off to a victory point lead. Now, as for me, I still have zero silver like I started with. I'm doing pretty okay on wood and stone. I could go to the prison and drop off my four guys, put them in jail. Yeah, that seems like probably the best option so I can start doing some stuff requiring silver. So I'm hopping over to the guardhouse. And for each worker here, I get to pick one action. This is the one I'm doing. I get to put as many enemy workers as I can into the jail and I get one silver each, so that's four. But to explain the other actions, this one would let me get every worker of my color back to my board from the jail. This one, I can spend five silver, or for me, four silver, since two of them are tax and I wouldn't pay one of them. Or I can take a debt and lose one virtue. In either case, I get to send all of my workers that have been captured but not put in prison yet back to my board. So I might do that if I was running low on workers and the AI just would not give these people up. Or finally, if I had a debt, which again is worth negative two victory points at the end of the game, I could spend six silver, three of a tax, so for me, five silver, to flip a debt, which also gets you one virtue. But like I said, I'm just getting the silver, turning them in. Back to the AI. Oh, they're going to the black market again. This time, the middle space is available. They're going to get another future scheme, another one of those little advanced cards. Oh, interesting. It's another black market card. I guess I can expect them to be going there more this game. That's taking them down into negative eight territory. If they go below zero, they just start gaining a debt every time they would lose virtue. Man, I've never seen the AI this low. And the great thing is they're about to trigger this. They'll send themselves to jail and they're already in there, which will get them more virtue loss and more debts. Let's do it, AI. Sink yourselves. I'm not going to worry about that for now. I've got some building to do. This time, a regular building card. 
I'm going to build a humble little well. Two wood, two stone, three of three points. I immediately get four clay from the well. I don't know why there's clay in my well. I thought there'd be water, but whatever. So boom, there we go. And that just so happens to be the exact resources I need to build a lumber camp. It's like I'm planning this stuff. Right, but how about you, AI? Ah, the king's storehouse. This is a really straightforward action, but also one you don't want to just sit and let them get over and over again. They just gain one virtue per worker at the storehouse. So in this case, it's just going to be one, but I like them being down here. So if I let them stay there, the second will move them up two, then three, then four. Might want to capture there. In fact, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. I'll go to the town center. Now in one and two player mode, if you have two or more workers there, you can pick workers from two different locations. In three and four player, you can't do that. So I'd have to pay one tax, but I'm exempt from that for the first capture, and then just one silver to the supply out of my four for the second. And I can pick two locations. I could, by the way, capture my own people if I wanted to uh, take away from what the AI will gain. I just basically put them right back in my supply. So I'll go to the tax stand and the king's storehouse. Three workers for me. Very nice. Of course, I'm sure the AI will grab me up out of the town center soon. Or not yet. They're finally doing the guild hall. They're going to move their own little flag up like they built the bottom level of the cathedral. They'll get one virtue move. And remember, for the harder AI, it's going to be worth three victory points. So here they go, moving on up, and I didn't mention, but these workers never go away because, again, they are the timer for the game. And also getting them out of those negatives, too bad. But I like building two. Here we go, back at the guild hall. And it is lumber camp time. Three more victory points. I'm going to spend all four clay, all two stone, but get four wood. Which means now I need some more stone if I want to get this mason's hut, which is just five victory points. No bonus for me yet, unless I hire some people. All right, and the AI... Ah, King Storehouse again for one virtue move. Glad I got rid of the person that was there. Well, that does get them up to four virtue now. All right, at the moment I've got two people on the town center, which means even if I have two on the quarry, they'll prefer to capture from there first. So let's start building up the stone for that mason's hut or the church. Meanwhile, the AI is doing guild hall again, a building. Man, if we both pull off a lot of these actions, the game will not last very long. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have taken away a reward card for both of those actions. It's like the AI is again building the cathedral and turning through them. And look at this, after all that tax robbery, they are feeling virtuous, or at least pretending to be so. Back to five, only a minus one now. That's okay, because I'm only after stone. Give me three. Oh, they're finally going to the guard house. So their first priority is to get their own workers back. It's going to get the four people who are in jail out of there. Uh, then if they had another action, they would put my guys into jail and get a marble. But they're not going to do that because uh, this is their first worker there. So they just get all these people out. Looking a little bit empty there, jail. And hey, you know what? Why not? If they're not bothering me yet, let's get all four stone from that quarry. Because apart from the buildings, both this and this level of the cathedral need a mix of stone and wood. And I have that now. All right, as for the AI. Oh, here we go, guardhouse again. So because this is their second worker, they're gonna get to resolve the first two in priority. They don't have anyone in the jail. So they're first going to put all of their captured people into the jail and get a marble. So now here they are waiting for me to free them. And then sad day, they're going to add two coins to the tax stand to let go of the three people I had ready to throw in jail. So they are back in their pool, darn. All right, well, uh, with that, let's uh, go to the town center. The first one is free. I think I'll grab their two people from the guardhouse. And then I'll pay one silver for the second one. I could go to the quarry and get all four of my people back, or to the town center and get those three back. Yeah, you know, let's go to the town center. Uh, I'll spend two silver to the supply, get all my guys back to my supply, and this one also arrested. And if it'll just give me a minute, I'll go to the guardhouse and throw some people in jail. And they are, ah, but they're getting two virtue from the king's storehouse. I don't like that. You know what? That makes me think I'm going to go ahead and arrest those guys immediately for the one tax that is free for Ada. Oh, and they're going to the guardhouse. Darn it. That's going to be their first one, but they have no one to throw in jail. So they're just going to add two more to the taxes to get rid of all five of the people I was about to throw in jail for money. No. Well, darn it. That was kind of a bummer. Oh, let's go over to the guardhouse and get these four back. And man, they're going to the storehouse again. That's just one virtue because I got their people out of there. And you know what? Hey, let's be silly. I'm going to get five stone, and then I think I'll go to the town center if they don't get them first and get those five guys back. And let's see. What do they do? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, they definitely got to the quarry first, and all five of these guys are captured. All right, well, that was a bummer. That was a bummer. I'm going to go ahead and build the mason's huts I was saving up for. Man, I got a lot of stone. Okay, so that's uh, two and four. Still a ton left. And again, that's five more victory points, and at the end of the game, if I get any people with a hammer symbol, they'll be worth victory points as well. 
And here's the AI's last card. So they're about to shuffle and do a bunch of those future schemes. But first, they're gonna capture some more of my guys. Biggest concentration is definitely over there at the guardhouse. All right, but two can play that. I need to get some money. So I'm gonna go over here. I'll do my free one to capture these two. And then I guess I'll spend the silver to grab the guy from the storehouse. Man, the AI just will not let up. They come right in and grab both those guys. That is pumping the tax stand up quite a bit, but I kind of like that I'm uh, so high virtue. I'm gonna try to stick with that. All right, if I build, and I could build the cathedral, I'll trigger a little reset. So with that in mind, let's run to the guardhouse while I can and throw these three guys into jail to trigger as many negatives for the AI as possible. And then they're going to the town center again. Really? Bye-bye, Forest Dude. Ooh, wait, wait, I gotta look. This is the new one where they get to capture from two places. So the guy in the guardhouse is gone too. And I'm looking at a bit of trouble worker-wise. Look, they have more than half of my workers on their capture space. So I might need to go to the guardhouse and take this action, probably taking the debt and losing a virtue to let go of all of them. Unless they actually take the action to go to the guardhouse and drop off the people. I don't know if that'll ever happen. But for now, we don't have to worry about that just yet. Let's punish them like I was planning. I'm going to go here to build the cathedral. Cost four in a mix of a stone and wood. And it does require a building. I'll throw in my one card remaining, the church. <laughs> and there we go. I can certainly pay the stone. And I gain one of the last two virtue cards. Oh, it is straight up two virtue. Wow. That's kind of more than I wanted. Although now if I gain a virtue, I'll get to trash a debt. So if I do release all my workers by gaining a debt, that wouldn't be too bad. But the big thing is we trigger this black market reset. So everyone in the black market goes to jail and we flip a new large black market card. So this is what I would gain if I went there. Although again, I'm way too virtuous to do so. And then we resolve both of these. Every player with at least three workers in prison loses a virtue. And then the person with the most workers in prison gains a debt. And as planned, both of those are hitting the AI. So they're down to seven, a little bit further away from getting bonus points. And they've got their first debt. Now they've got pretty good ways to get rid of those, but for now that's nice. And the AI is going to capture, huh? Well, they've been so capture happy, there's literally no one on the board for them to grab. They can't grab from the guild hall. So in this case, they just do nothing. They don't even add the coin to the taxes because they didn't get anybody. I'm happy with a skipped action. All right, now I'd like to build some more cathedrals, but I would need marble to do it. And I cannot get it from the black market, so I'd have to use the king storehouse action, uh, three stone and or wood to get a marble. And I've certainly got it to spare, so let's go do it for three stone. There we go. Give me my marble. Ooh, and the AI is accelerating the game at two. We got just a guild hall placement with nothing going on. Just three victory points for them. Which means just four more builds will end the game. And I'm certainly planning to do that one and probably this one too with how much stone and wood I have. Although I need some building cards to make that happen. So you know what, to that end, let's go to the workshop. I do have enough coins to get a worker. I could get the patron. She would love me when I go to the king's storehouse have an alternative action option, paying one stone to get virtue, but I'm already really virtuous. But she does have the hammer icon, that's one victory point, but nah, I think I'll just go. So it's one card plus one prepare, so here I'm just getting one. A factory, hmm. I don't have anywhere near three gold, I think it's supposed to be trash for the cathedral. Oh, and the AI is so happy to get the capture again. Uh, King Storehouse wins the tie. So there they go, have fun guys. I'm down to two workers, I think maybe I should go to the town center, capture all of those guys, let's do that for free. And then I think I'll take the debt in a second to free all of them. Oh, they're still going to the black market. Could be two marble because the rightmost space is open. And yeah, this is my very last worker, so I better go. I'm going to do this, so I'll lose one virtue, going down to 13. I'll gain a debt, and I can free all my guys. Which also means they don't get to go to the prison and get a marble for dropping them off. And my virtue is still super high. With uh, two more gains, like from doing the cathedral, I can get rid of that debt easily. All right, and... Well, workshops are two to the tax. Man, that's a lot of taxes. Uh, they'll get rid of that patron I was thinking about buying, and they're going to add one future scheme. Although, I think the game will end before they get the chance to use it, so not a big deal. It is one of those blank acceleration guild halls. All right, speaking of the guild hall, boom, here we go. Spend my marble. I'm going to grab the last reward card right before the AI could get a chance to take it. It will cost the factory, by the way, to get... Oh, lovely. This will save me an action. I'm going to gain a virtue, so up to 14, almost ready to get rid of my debt, and I get a building card to discard again. A drafting room. Yep. Can't build any of that, uh, and getting two more locations wouldn't really help much. All right, AI. Oh, they're going to the guardhouse. This is a pretty easy one for them. That's their first worker, so they're just going to get everyone out of there. All right, meanwhile, for me, I just need uh, two more wood or two more stone to build another cathedral level, so let's start grabbing that. Oh, but oh no, they're going to the guardhouse. They don't have anyone to get out or drop off. Oh man, so they're going to take two actions. I should have sent my guys to jail. They're going to put two in the taxes to free their guys and three in the taxes to get rid of their debt and gain a virtue. Darn it. 
Man, look at these taxes. 16 coins. That's like a victory point all by itself. I've never seen them that high. But uh, I don't know if I actually need them. I think I'm just going to keep on doing my thing and try to rush the end game. Let's get some stone. And, oh, they're going to the guardhouse again, which is a wasted action because there's nothing to do with any of that. There they go. That's a pretty tempting capture target, isn't it? But no, no, no. I just want to keep pursuing what I'm doing. Three more stones, so that's enough, yes, to uh, do that cathedral level. And so I'll have two wood and two stone, maybe for a final building. And they're robbing the tax stand, getting all of that money. Or not really, just one marble. But it does take them down almost into the danger zone again. I like that. Ooh, now let's see. Before I do the guild hall, I guess I should maybe arrest them and send them in there to uh, have them get the negative from that. So sure, let's go to the town center. And I'll pay the one extra, so I'll grab their three guys, and I think I'll return my three so they don't get grabbed. Oh, and good timing, because they're going to the town center and grabbing these two. All right, but I'm going to the guardhouse, dropping off these three for three silver, and putting them in the bad spot if I trigger the black market reset. Speaking of black market, they're getting minus one and a future scheme. That's basically useless to them. Awesome. And that means when I go here, and spend eight stone lordy to go up there. Uh, we have no cards left, so I just gain a virtue, which means my debt is expunged. Bye-bye. I do have to lose that drafting room I had no intention of building. But both their black market guys get thrown out. And clearly they've got the run of the jail. So one more debt and minus one virtue. Excellent. We've got them into negatives again. And all right, two more guild hall placements. I can count on them to do one. I'd love to try to get one more building and construct it. Well, let's see if that'll happen. Oh, never mind. Those are in the king's storehouse and getting a virtue. All right, meanwhile, for me, I'm going to go to the workshop just to get two building cards. Looking for one that's easy to build, and neither of those really fits the bill. Yeah, the stone market, I could get the brick, but that's not great. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, it's back to the black market, getting two marble, going back down to negative three on the track. But remember, these marble are each one victory point for them, so wow, that is ten. Yikes. There might be a silly risk, but let's get one more set of two buildings. And, okay, okay, cool. The clay pit, that's nice and easy to build. I just got to get four clay, which is simple. Oh, and then I get a gold or a marble. One victory point. All right. So I just need the time to build it, which I might not have. The AI just did the guild hall. So they're going up to here. They're going to gain one virtue, and that is almost filled. So they're at negative one now. All right, two clay actions will get me that. Do I have three turns left? Here we go. Let's try. Remember, that's one plus number of workers for clay, so I've got two out of the four. And King Storehouse, yes! I mean, not a huge yes, they're certainly out of the virtue dog days, but uh, it's okay. All right, about to finish the game, that'll be three clay. And the AI is losing two virtue, back to negative one, although they get a marble for plus one, so I guess that was kind of a mixed result overall. And I will go to the Guild Hall, which will trigger the end of the game. We'll each get one more turn. Oh, and I'm building the clay pit for four and one. It says three or three points, but I'll take it. And I get a gold or a marble, it doesn't really matter, they're each worth one victory point. I guess since the AI is marble, I'll go for gold, just to be oppositional. Alright, AI, your final turn, gonna do anything useful? Oh man, that was ridiculous! Oh my gosh, if they win because of this, I'm gonna be annoyed. They're getting a final guild hall action. You know there's no room left, they still do it, so yeah, that was a five victory point swing. And actually six, because that gets him out of virtue, come on! And as for me, there's like a billion ways for me to get just a single victory point, but I think simplest is just to go to the mines and get one gold. All right, so that is that. Let's see what our victory points add up to and find out who won. So for me first, the number of buildings completed. Let's get rid of these uncompleted ones. They've got three, five, three, three. So that is 14 points from those. Then our cathedral completion. It's another 12, so that's 26. Virtue victory points. Oh yeah, you know I'm virtuous. Seven more for 33. Any deaths for minus two? No, sir. Any gold or marble? Yes, 34, 35. For every 10 coins, one or two point, no. And for every two workers in the jail, minus one, no. Oh, let's not forget flags. I had a whopping zero hammers, so no bonuses. So 35 is my final score. Pretty respectable. Let's see how the AI did. So first, their cathedral completion, they just got to 12. Their virtue, they just got above negative, so just 12 so far. Minus two per unflipped debt. Yes, so they're down to 10. I have a plus marble, so that's 15, 20, 21. Minus one per pair of workers in jail. And they just left these guys to rot, so that brings them down to 19. And then three per worker on the guild hall. Three, six, nine, 12, plus 19, 31. Skunked them by four on hard difficulty. Excellent. So there you go, we completed the West Kingdom's trifecta with Architects. Hope you enjoyed the play. Click the link that just popped up if you'd like to see my review of this one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and we'll see you at the next stop.